Amen. John's Gospel, yeah. chapter 1, in reference to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Malachi 2 and 10 says, Not all one you father had not one God created yes. us all. So I testify for the record that I'm Jesus only. According to the scripture, I'm one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And then you may be seated. Again, I, I say, I need to all the fathers. Amen. I teach you in the name of Jesus Christ. I say to the greatest father of us all, the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for it. But he's done for us, that because he made it Calvary, he didn't have to do it. But he did it to redeem a lost people. And thank God we were lost, but now we are found. We are in holiness, and we are in holiness for faith. No matter what the devil brings against us. Again, no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. As long as we keep our hand in the master's hand, everything is going to be all right. As long as we keep covered by the blood of Jesus. I promise you, church, we'll see God's face in peace one day and hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And that's what we are striving for. God said, you go, I'll go with you. Hallelujah. You take one step, he'll take two. Hallelujah. You just have to believe and trust in God. And especially so, I've shared often, uh, Lord, I want you to give me Genesis 32. And uh, I want to read verse, I think, 24 and 27, 24 and 25. Now, uh, but uh, let, let me just kind of share with you again. It's, it takes the courage of an individual to receive the blessings of God through a faithfulness to God that's based on, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. But the principles of faith is based on obedience to a divine instruction given by God himself. And we see, as I shared the other night, the breakdown in the world today where there's no courage left, no backbone. Nobody wants to stand up against the devil. How in the world can you let a small minority of homosexuals turn the principle of God and his creation, God made the genders. You need male and female. And I want to say again to that lesbian pastor, your clever words don't mean nothing to me. To the foolish people, they're clever, but to me it ain't nothing but some vain babbling. Uh, Romans chapter 1, where it says, you don't have to go to it, doing that which is against nature. Now the lesbian says that, well, it's not against our nature. What I say again, y'all go and have a baby. Yes. If it ain't against your nature now, go and have a baby. To the homosexual, the male homosexual, go and have a baby. It ain't against your nature. Hallelujah. If it's not against your nature, how come you can't impregnate each other? All right. Female to female, male to male. Amen. Why? Because it's against your nature. Yeah. It's against biology. Yeah. Now you want to argue with the biology book? All right. you want, forget about God. Yeah. Argue with the biology book. All right. Right. Then I know you're a fool. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord. Now in Genesis uh, chapter 32, and I want to clear up another conception. You nobody seen God's face in the earth. Well, now wait a minute. And I, I got a question coming in later on, but uh, maybe I can clear that up also. Uh, give me a, I, I'm in Genesis 32, read, read uh, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and it, there- Wait, he was what? Left alone. Your worst crisis that comes to you on this journey is when you all by yourself. Amen. Nobody to comfort you. Nobody to encourage you. Yeah. Sometimes you got to stand on your own two feet right, Lord. Yeah. and be counted. Yeah. Read that again. 
And Jacob was left alone. Uh huh. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. A wrestled a man with him. Uh huh. A man. Yes. Wasn't no ghost. Oh, right. Wasn't no angel. Mm -hmm. It was a man. Yes. Was no figment. It was a man. Right. Read. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Back up to verse uh, 23. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint mm -hmm. as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. That's what I want to get to, let me go. It is almost daylight. Read. All right. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Jacob wrestled with a man. But he knew there was something about that man that had divine power. Yes. He was by himself. Couldn't nobody comfort him. Couldn't nobody help him. Hallelujah. And he wrestled with this man. But he couldn't get the advantage. Because the man was stronger than him. Amen. Now the man knew this also. Yes. So he told uh, the uh, the man told Jacob, "Turn me loose." What did Jacob say? Mm. I will not what? I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now wait a minute. Jacob knew blessing don't come from a man. Right, right. I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. Something you got that I need. All right. Not that I want. It's something you got. I need. Free, yes. Hallelujah. Right. So he wrestled for it. I'm trying to let you know, brothers and sisters, whenever you're going through your problem, you got to learn how to get on your knees and pray to God till you get a breakthrough. Oh, if you accept defeat, yes. there's no such thing as a neutral ground. Right. Hallelujah. Lord, I want you to bless me. Yes. Lord, I need Free. this, not this. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. If you don't give up on God, God will never give up on you. Sometimes you got to get on your knees yeah. and pray to God and say, Lord, I'm not getting up here until you get me a breakthrough until I hear something from heaven. Yeah. I'm not going to turn you loose yeah. till you bless me. Yeah. That's when God showed his divine power. Yeah. What did he do? He touched the hollow of his thigh. Uh-huh. And he said, let me go for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. In other words, he was going to be one of the founders yep. of the Hebrew nation called Israel. Now the point I'm trying to explain to you, Jacob had to wrestle to get his breakthrough. Now God allowed this to be put in scripture text because he wanted people to know. You don't give up because you don't get something right away. You don't quit the church because it looks like ain't nothing going your way in church. All right. You think things are going all right in the world? All right, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, come the other night, a woman walked up five times and went trying to get in my house. One of them street walkers. Amen. Now, I don't care what they do. I'm against it. But if you make a choice to do that, that's your choice. If you decide you want to be homeless, and I learned this the hard way, yeah. you decide you want to be homeless, that's your choice. You got two arms, two legs, yeah. two eyes, praise God. Right. You chose to be homeless because you don't want to pay no rent. Yeah. You want to beg your way. And the money you get, you want to spend it on drugs to get high. Yeah. Yeah. You had to get high and get a comfortable place to stay. Yeah. And if you got children, you're going to send them to the state. Let the yep. state raise your children. Right, Look here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What ails you? Glory, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, nobody wants to defend the faith once they live it. Give me, uh, uh, I want 2 Timothy chapter 4. Jacob needed something from God. And I believe subsequent scripture tells us in, in the verse, latter part of verse 32, it says he called the place Pinal, for there I have seen God, what? Face to face. To face. And my life is spared. Wait. You seen God face to face. Yeah, I wrestled with him. Amen. But can't nobody see God. Jacob wrestled with him. Oh, yeah. Oh. Abraham said, I'll with him. Yeah. The disciples handled him. Yeah. 
Sometimes he didn't know he was God. How did he tell he revealed himself? He said, show us the Father. And it satisfies us. And Jesus said, have I been so long time with you, Philip, and you don't know who I am? Are you crazy, Philip? Didn't you see me how when you raised the dead? Didn't you see me cry the angry sea? Didn't you see me open up the blinded eyes? And you want to know who I am? When you there, when I told Lazarus to come out of that graveyard. Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. And the Bible said the dead man. But he didn't come out until after Jesus told the, the, the men that were with him, he said, move that stone. See, the stone got it blocked. I didn't give him life, but that stone got it blocked. Right. Somebody got to move the stone. Right. Well, God, can't you get it? No, I want you to do it. Lord. I want you to believe that a dead man's going to come out. Right. Now move the stone. Right. Now what this means is not one thing you can do move that stone. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to see this dead man come out. I want to see this mouth of brothers and sisters. You trust your mouth. That means that God has got to show your mouth that you never could for that man. But all you got to do is trust in God. And do not deny the flesh. Hallelujah. But take the spirit to overcome the flesh. Hallelujah. Jacob wrestled until he got his blessing. We have to wrestle today until we get our blessing. And I want to say to them, Supreme Court Justices, I'm going to point you out again, you genuine first-class cowards. Yes. You got a bunch of heathens, yes. animals, yes. intimidate you not to take a vote for God. Yes. And that's what it was. You refuse to take a vote for God. Well, we're going to postpone it. Why are you going to postpone it? Because you're afraid, you devil, you. Yes. I point out all the Supreme Court justices, you genuine cowards. And I'll say it again over YouTube as long as God give me a breath and as long as God allow me to be on YouTube. I'm going to say it over and over again. You're powerful. Yeah. You ain't got no business being no just at all. all right. Justice takes from the word just. Yeah. You're supposed to be just. That's, right. That's why they call you a justice. That's right, Bob. Right. Jesus. What is just about you allowing the baby murder? And you know it's wrong, but you're afraid to speak out against yeah. it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sit down somewhere. Look. And watch television and read your comic book. Oh, you ain't, that's all you were. Hallelujah. Lord. And hope someday along the way you can find repentance in your heart. Yeah. But I can't find nowhere where God ever blessed a coward. Nope. Yeah. And another person ain't never blessed with a fool. Yeah. You can't find nowhere in the Bible where he said, Fool be thou made whole. Nope. And he never said, Coward be thou made whole. Nope. Everybody that wanted to bless had to press their way. The blind man was by the roadside. Somebody told him that Jesus was going to pass through. All right. He said, well, I'm going to wait. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how long he was there waiting. But one thing, when he heard that Jesus was coming through, he started hollering. Oh. Yeah. Jesus, we had to point out and make you get in your head. Jesus knew that man was there, and Jesus walked right past him. You mean God will pass you by? Sometimes when you want to see how much you want him. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he started hollering, Jesus, hallelujah. And finally, I mean, he said, son of David. And Jesus stopped. Whoa, wait a minute. Hallelujah. Son of David. That means the Christ. Hallelujah. The disciples told him, say, you're making too much noise. Be quiet. And he got louder. And he hollered out loud, son of David. And he stopped and said, wait a minute. Bring him here. All right, look. He didn't go to him. He told the disciples to go and bring him to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you got to come to God. Right. He put a leaning in your heart, a desire in your heart, a, 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 a urging in your heart, but you got to come to him. you got to come to church yourself. Amen. You can't always wait for somebody to pick you up and bring you. Amen. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you got to come to church yourself. All right. And when he, that man came to him, I, I, I like that part, the disciples came and said, be of good cheer. Yes. Yeah. He called it me. Yes, God called it me. Yes. <laughs> In other words, he, he heard you and he started hollering. Yes. Sometimes you can't get quiet on God. Amen. Amen. Right. I'm here. Sometimes you got to kick off your shoes and shout a little bit. Amen. Get loud. Get beside yourself. Yeah. I'm here. They looking at me. Yeah, they're looking at me. The devil looking too. And so is God. And the more you get happy, the more yeah. God gets you. The more you say thanks to Jesus, the more God gets happy. Hallelujah. So I'm going to cry out. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to sing my song to God. I'm going to clap my hands and stomp my feet. I'm going to get happy in the Lord. And I'll be going back home and just say, I'm going to get happy in the church. Church of my deliverance. Church of my health. Church of my sanctuary. Church of my sanctuary. Church 
telling you, you got to find a sanctuary, yes. church, yes. a sanctuary where you can wrap yourself up in Jesus yes. and forget about the outside world. Mm -hmm. When Absalom rose up against David, yes. you hear me? The Bible said David fled for his life. Yes. Wait a minute. You handpicked of God, you won't let the devil make you run. He said, yeah, but I know I'm running to right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. God is going to the high place yeah. to the mountain. Yeah. Top of the mountain. Yes. That meant a place of protection where he could reach God and couldn't have no interference. The mountain is the holy place for the church of God. Yes. Yes. And when you run to the church of God, you cast all your cares upon God because now you're in his presence in his sanctuary. Yes. Now here's the point. When he heard that Absalom and Ahithophel, yep. his chief advisor, had also turned against David mm -hmm. and went to Absalom, yep. his enemy. Yes. Wait. Me and my best friend left and we were the, <laughs> the rest of the crowd. Mm. Yeah. Well, I thought that was my best friend. You ain't got no best friend but Jesus. So that's it. Somebody wrote a song with a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when he went to that mountaintop, he got his pencil and his paper out and he wrote that song. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I told you, you got to look in the depth of that text. He was telling God I'm in trouble. But I know you're going to help me. That's right. Yes. That may not my help me. I know you're going to help me because the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. Yeah, yes. Even though I lose the valley of shadow of death, thou be with me. Yes. Thou rod and thy staff. In other words, the Bible, the Word of God, yes. is with me. Yeah. You get your strength from the Word of God yes. and from the Bible. And for a promise that you may not have received. But still, it's going to be kept. And that promise of eternal life after you pass through this earthly plane. He never promised you heaven on earth. Never. He never promised you on this earth you wouldn't go test and try. He never said you wouldn't get setbacks. Hallelujah. But it's all if you stay with me. As long as you're with me, I'll bring it through. Every storm and every trial, every test, everything the adversary can bring against you, I'll bring it through. As long as you stay with me. What did Paul say? Stay on board. Stay on board. Don't jump off. Don't try to swim and make it for yourself. Stay on board. And you told me. Hallelujah. As long as you stay on board, those who stay with you yes. will be profit. Hmm? Not a loss of life. Young people. And he saved every last one of them. Even the heathen captain. He's going to jump over yeah. board. He's the captain of the ship. That's right. He's going to jump <laughs> The jailer who was watching them, yes. when they found out that the disciples had escaped, he said, I'll kill myself. He said, do yourself no harm. No harm. That was nothing but the hand of God. Don't worry about it. Oh. Don't get upset. Yeah. God just sent an earthquake. Yes. Take out the jail a little All bit because right. he wanted us loose. Right. And he didn't want to send nobody down to... Oh, the handcuffs. He right. said, I heard a uh, 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 earthquake. Uh, earthquake. Yes. yes. Right. He wanted to show something extreme. Yes. Something out of the ordinary. Yes. So he said, there's earthquake to shake up the jail. Yes. Let people know I'm still God. Yes. I'm still running the show. Yes. I'm still in charge. Yes. Church, never yes. quit on God. Yes. And God will never quit on you. Thank God. And bless Amen. each and every father here. Amen. 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 Now we have a few questions. I know you said that women shouldn't wear pants because they are a man's garment. But I see that you are wearing a robe, which to me is the same as a dress, which you believe is a woman's garment. Can you explain this to me? Is a dress different than the robe you wear? Uh, yes, I'll explain it to you if you've got enough sense to understand. You see, sometimes a person can have a such a low IQ, they can't understand nothing. They can't even understand ABC. But nevertheless, I'm going to try to deal with it. Give me again Deuteronomy 22 and 5. And again, there's a word that you are not taking hold to. Otherwise, you wouldn't ask the question. Now, in that dispensation of time, all women and men wore robes. 
But what I said, I said often, the woman's robe had to be different than the man's robe. Otherwise, he never would have wrote this epistle in uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Yeah. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now again, the word that you are missing is pertaineth, mm -hmm. which means identify with. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now how plain is that? A man is not supposed to wear women's clothes, and a woman is not supposed to wear men's clothes. I know where she's coming from. She wears pants, and she thinks, because uh, she goes to the Baptist church, and the Baptist pastor don't preach against it, it must be all right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If God said pretend to be means what identifies with, and in this dispensation of time, men wear pants, and women wear dresses. And it's been that way since the revolution in 1960 when the feminist group moved in and they wanted to show their, their distaste for Bible record so they began to wear pants and dress like men. Now all of them were not lesbians, but the lesbian submarine that movement and took control over the feminist movement until the feminist movement is no longer a feminist movement, it's a lesbian, yes. homosexual movement. And that's what you have to do. Pretend to identifies with and so yeah if I wear a robe that's fine but it's my robe and I'm a man so therefore be careful and did they wear pants back then or dresses back then no they wore gowns but I said again woman's gown was different than a man's gown otherwise God would not have said so now would you have a problem uh of course those who will watch you over YouTube. If your husband come home with a dress on, would you have a problem with it? Ooh, hallelujah. I think you'd be quite upset. Amen. First thing you do is grab your phone. Right. You need to call your girlfriend or your mom and say, yeah, right. you got a problem. Hallelujah. Or call a hypocrite pastor of that hypocrite church you go to. Right, Amen. My husband got a dress on. Oh my goodness. Look at the church we'll pray for him. Maybe. Or you might say, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, everybody. God ain't never made no cross dresser. Yep. And God is so intelligent. And his intellect is so far above humanity. He wrote way back in Deuteronomy 20, 25 about cross dressing that applies right today. Oh, Notice he's been saying that right here. He said that was pertain to. Amen. I think that clears it up pretty well. Amen. You got a mind to understand what does here the Lord. What's your next question? What is your view on the King James Bible? And which Bible dictionary should I get? Well, if, well, you have several Bible dictionaries. I think they're all good if you, as long as you read them in its proper perspective. You've got to understand most of the translations derive in favor of a Trinitarian church. Yeah. But as long as you can write your device, the Hallman's Illustrated Bible Dictionary, I think is a very good Bible dictionary. The Analytical Bible Dictionary is a very, very good uh, dictionary Bible. So, uh, and then you have the other one, uh, Angus Bible Dictionary Religion, another very good one. But you've got to understand, now, they were all based on a Trinitarian authority that came out of the Nicene Council in 325. I'm saying this in this, 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 this context. Now, apostles never worshiped the Trinity. But a clever person with a high intellect can take the Bible and make it read practically any way he wants to, especially to a person who's unknowledgeable. That's, right, That's why you got Baptist, Methodist, and Presbyterian churches, all that kind of churches. Why aren't y'all the same? All of them came up under, uh, when the split came from the Catholic Church by Luther and uh, John Calvin, they all were in one accord. Well then, how come if you're a Protestant believing the Trinity, why you got a Lutheran? Why you got a Pres Presbyterian? Yes. Why you got a Baptist? Well, you got an Episcopal church. Well, you got all these different churches. Because you are divided. And God is not divided. But he allowed for the heathen to have a church divided. And that's why you have denomination when God don't have but one church. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So I think I cleared that up pretty well. Oh, uh, uh, read that question again. Maybe I missed the letter point. What is your view on the King James Bible? Okay, now the King James Bible, a study was done in 1970 in the University of Texas that stated that the King James translation was the truest to all the Hebrew scrolls and the Greek manuscripts 
and more closely identified than the Revised Bibles. Now the Revised Bibles are written because of certain passages in the scripture they don't want people to know. Yes. So who did that? The devil did it. Yes. They'll, they'll never want you to know the truth. Yes. So they have revised Bibles. Amen. Who's going to revise the Bible? Matter of fact, the Living Bible uh, was translated, the chief translator was a lesbian. And she's going she to uh, translate the King James Bible into another version. Mm. I think they left the name of Jesus out 24 times. They left out the word fornication. They left out uh, some other words they left purposely out of the Bible. Oh, sorry. They left yeah. out the Bible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. They did. You have to pretty much butcher the Bible, wouldn't you? Yeah. So, no, the King James Bible is a true translation. All right. I have a question. Who do you know of the Companion Bible and its translations? The who? Companion Bible. Oh, the Companion Bible. It's another one of them translated Bibles. They translate it because there's something in the King James Version Bible they don't want people to know. The matter of fact, Pope Pius XII, 1940, issued a decree to all of his bishops and the Catholic Church. He said, do not let the parishioners read the King James Bible. Why? Because there's certain things that they don't want people to know. Yeah. They don't want you to know that the uh, Jews were uh, monsters. Yeah. They don't want you to know that apostles worship one God. Yeah. They don't want you to know that there's no Christian ever practiced multi, multiple God worship. Lord. Yeah. They practice strict monotheism. Yeah. Monotheism and single God worship. Right, apostles and the prophets never worship a triune Godhead or a trinity of gods. If you stop and think of the foolishness of three gods, now watch, according to the Catholic mandate, co-equal and co-eternal. Same power and the same divinity. Three separate personalities. So if there's three separate personalities, there's three independent thought patterns. Right, yeah, to be. Which one got to start when they have one accord? Well, they got to be a boss. Oh, right, oh right. God the Father's boss. <laughs> and Jesus, he's second person of the Trinity. Show it to me. Oh, well, God the Father's a boss, and Jesus, second person of the Trinity, and the Holy Ghost is standing in the corner. Glory, Waiting his turn. Show it to me. Glory. Give me Revelation 1 and 8. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe you said, I'm the Lord. Yes. I, I am Alpha and Omega. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Say who? The Lord. Capital? Capital L. Capital L. Or oh, uh, the divinity. Divine person. How many Lords are there? The Bible says only but one Lord. Only oh, one divine person. I right, read. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The Almighty, El Shaddai, which means mighty God, yes. God Almighty, or you can just simply use the term Almighty. Yes. Jesus said so. Now I'm going to show you something about red print. I don't know what they do it now. Some red print edition, when it gets to yes. uh, the Almighty, yes. that's black. Yes. So yes, we yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's read it again, break it down. I am Alpha and Omega. Come. The beginning and the ending. Come. Saith the Lord. Come. Which is and come. Which, and which was. Come. And which is to come. Come. The Almighty. Period. Yes. Amen. A sentence structure don't end until you get the period. Right. So when you got to come, it's the same person speaking. Amen. So how do you want to see this is back to oh, over here? Here's this red print. That's Jesus. Uh -huh. And I had a preacher tell me that. Well, you can't you read that? That's Jesus. But when they say, Almighty, that's black. Oh, so I said, I need Jesus. I said, oh, okay. And I heard of that church of God in Christ. Like I'm an idiot. I didn't go far in school and wasn't very smart in school, but I know the difference between a comma and a period. That's right. I know comma means the same stuff is still going on. And period means the same thing. That's right. You can start another city, but you, that, 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 that sin is still going on. You got to comma. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Next question. Oh, I feel good teaching the truth. Amen. I have a question regarding your statement. God was with two angels, 
Are you stating that angels have creation power or acted as creators alongside of God? Well, where did you say that angels create the heavens and the earth? Now, you can't find that. Get Isaiah 44 and 24. Yeah. Now, let's, let's use the Bible as our roadmap and our guidance. And that's what uh, Reverend so-and-so told me. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, Thus saith the Lord, Thy Redeemer, uh -huh. and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things. I am the Lord that maketh all things. That stretches forth the heavens alone. Wait. That says he made the heavens alone. Uh -huh. That spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Spread abroad the earth by myself. Where do you have company? Right. Where do you have a cosign? Where did he ask permission from some other guy to do what he wanted to do? Yes. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yes. So therefore, there's only one creator. And what was that question again? I have a question regarding your statement. God was with two angels. Are you stating that angels have creation power? There's nowhere in the world where it says the angels created the heavens and the earth. Now, given Genesis 18 chapter, and maybe I can explain. I know where you come from. I think you're a little bit confused. Yeah. In just 18 chapter, yeah. and jump right into verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of memory. Now wait, it didn't say angel appeared to him. It said the Lord. Gabriel Lord did? Yes. Yeah. Yes. God appeared to him in the plains of memory. Uh -huh. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood by him. Three men. Watch. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door. And bowed himself toward the ground. And said, My Lord, if wait, now... Now he said, My Lord... They're singular. Lord singular and yeah. plural. Now the three men. But one he self showed humility and submitted to. Yeah. My Lord. Yeah. My personal. My God. Yeah. Other two was there. He ain't he didn't give them no salutation. Yeah. Now watch. Three men. Yeah. Given 19th chapter of Genesis. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. Those were the two men that came with God in Genesis chapter 18. Now, read down uh, uh, Genesis 18 chapter, in verse 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now wait, Abraham still, still stood with God. All right. But the two men went toward Sodom. Now you pick it up in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, Amen. verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. Now that's the two angels Jehovah sent right. to warn Lot and to free his family. That's the two men that the, the uh, men of Sodom wanted to have sex with. Mm -hmm. yes. Two men. Now what? Three men appeared to him. One was God, two was angels. Right. Amen. Yes. I hope that's clear. Okay. Well, thank God. Yes. And we said to the YouTube viewers, we're going to answer all your questions with honesty and clarity. But now, if you already know the answer, why are you going to ask me the question? Right. Lord, don't let me fail. Amen. I want to be your bride when my way stands up. Hold me by your side when my way stands up. Say, pray the Lord on His glory and day. Father's day. A day of holiness, happiness, health, strength, anointing, power, deliverance, faith, healing. A beautiful day. Let's give our prophet a great hand for that powerful, powerful sermon. Give our prophet a great hand for being our daddy. For being Father's Day. The Father being uh, has been more than a father to all of us. Amen. And I can only speak for myself. I didn't have a father coming up. Fine. Mm -hmm. But see, it wasn't about that. 
about me being a father to my children. And the only way that I was a father to my children was being taught how to be a father by one Prophet H. Walker. So thank you, Prophet. We all love you, we all respect you. You've truly been a blessing my soul over these 20 odd years. And again, I give Jesus Christ all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Double honor to his man servant, our father in faith, yes. one Prophet H. Walker. Let baby mother walk a little memory and legacy. All to the preachers of the gospel, saints, family, and friends. Church, let's take this happiness that our great prophet and father has bestowed upon us. Take it and keep it and hide it in our hearts. Know that we are special people above all people. Know we got the victory. Know we have an anointing. Know we got power of prayer, fast and supplication. We can be beat. We can be defeated. We're the head and not the tail. So I thank God again. Go out father. Father H. Walk. You came in church happy, you leave it happier. Amen. Now we all stand to be dismissed. May the Lord watch. Between me and Z. While we're absent. We absent. One from another. One from another. In Jesus' name. Jesus.